Jamaica must be always prepared for elections in the shortest possible time, according to several CCJ judges. Jagdio warns the government lack of direction could lead to Guyanese not benefiting significantly from oil revenues. Bandits terrorize Burby's family as crime escalates. And in sport, third ODI of Tri-Nation series involving West Indies washed out. These and more coming up after the break. Stay with us. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing. I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Planning a cleanup? We can help. Sivan's waste management skip bins can be provided for home renovation projects, yard cleanups, or construction sites. It's simple. Step one, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Step two, we deliver the skip bin size of your choice. Step three, load the skip with all of your junk. And finally, step four, we take it all away. It's that simple. Bins are also available in various sizes, so there's no job that's too big or too small. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice, the choice is clear. clear. Two soft text toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Good evening and welcome to this, our Thursday, May 9, 2019 edition of News Update. I am Lashona Gomes Cornelius. Our top story this evening. The Guyana Elections Commission must be ready for the holding of general and regional elections in the shortest possible time, particularly in the context of the current construct of the National Assembly, where there is a slim one-seat majority. This was the view expressed by several judges, including President of the Caribbean Court of Justice, Justice Adrian Saunders, during today's presentation of oral arguments on the validity of the December 21 no-confidence motion. Details from Sandy Ramatar. The argument continued with Senior Counsel Douglas Mendez putting to the court that the proceedings are on borrowed time as the 90 days timeline for the holding of regional and general elections have expired. He said this is provided for in Article 1066 of the Guyana Constitution that elections must be held within 90 days. Therefore, the Ghana Elections Commission had to have been ready to hold elections as is stipulated by the Constitution. Because um, with the best will in the world, um, it seems now that the delay will, obviously it's more than three months, Yes. but we are going into, into what? Um, four months. We've March, May, gone four months. We've, four months. We're the 10th May. of May, so we're going in with 11 days from five months. Yes. 
All that indicates, Your Honours, is that is that the there is um, the court should be stingy about the time, further time that is given in order to ensure that the constitutional mandate is upheld. President of the court, Justice Adrian Sanders, said the Ghana Elections Commission must at all times make provision for abnormal situations, referring to the no confidence motion triggering an election. The intervention of the no confidence point is an unusual situation that, cause, that should cause you now to adjust and not proceed along the path that you had crafted before you were aware that there would be this sudden burden placed on GCOM. One of the judges, Winston Anderson, indicated that the judiciary should have expedited the cases in such a way that it adheres to the 90-day timeline in the Ghana Constitution. The appellate judge said the two rulings handed down by the courts here have frustrated the work of the Constitution. I would have thought that the state's judicial resources ought to have been deployed in such a way that a decision is taken on this matter so that if it goes in one way, the Constitution can be upheld. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm frankly astonished that we are here. The Learned Council spoke about borrowed time. I'm not sure where that is found in the Constitution. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Meanwhile, the Caribbean Court of Justice was today informed that Charandas Persaud, who voted to topple the government on December 21, did not intend to vote against the list from which his name was extracted, but voted for the lack of confidence in the administration. Details from Sandy Ramatar. The Carbon Court of Justice today commenced the oral arguments in three of the consolidated matters on the December 21 No Confidence motion. The court first heard arguments in the case of Opposition Leader Barrett Jagdew versus Attorney General Basil Williams. Senior Counsel Douglas Mendes for the Opposition Leader asked for the court to declare that 33 votes were valid and amounted to the majority on the night of December 21. The senior counsel reminded that on the night of December 21, 33 of the 65 members of the National Assembly voted in favour of the no-confidence motion without objection. The government days after claimed that 34 votes were required and that one of the members who voted in favour of the motion, Charndars Persaud, was ineligible because he held dual citizenship. The senior counsel cautioned that the words simple and absolute does not define majority in the Guyana constitution. You then have to deal with the question of validity of his acts, including, of course, the validity of what he did, of validity of his vote on the 22nd of December. And then the government never had a majority. Well, that the government have never had a majority, all through the, the last um, 2015 to 2019, 2018. That's effectively what, they, what they're going to ask you to determine. Now, outside of the... the um, outside of the code that has been established by the legislation for determining those very questions. Because that code also empowers the court to determine the very sticky question that arises in this case of the validity of his acts since 2015. Mendes debated that it was not required for Persaud to notify the Speaker of the National Assembly, Dr. Martin Scotland, that he had intended to vote against the list from which he was extracted. He argued that Persaud was a valid member of the National Assembly because he was not challenged within the 28 days through an elections petition. He said the position of the vote of confidence by Persaud was unimpeachable, therefore the proceedings of December 21 cannot be invalid. If it is interpreted to mean you must always vote with your list, then 1066 has no meaning whatsoever. If you must always vote with your list, then the government will always get a majority on a vote of confidence. It, 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 it would go beyond 1066. It would mean that voting on any motion in Parliament would be a charade. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the whole idea of collective responsibility would mean nothing either. Because the idea of collective responsibility is the government must ensure that it maintains support among its list. The court was told that a crossing of the floor is nothing new and that it has occurred on three occasions in the past. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. 
Still on the no-confidence appeal at the Caribbean Court of Justice, Senior Counsel Iman Courtney, who is representing Attorney General Basil Williams, in the CCJ hearing of the validity of the no-confidence motion, struggled to convince the court that members of Parliament cannot vote against their list in his bid to invalidate Charanda's Bursaud's vote. Details from Sandy Ramatar. Defending the government, Senior Counsel Iman Courtney maintained that Charundas Persaud should not have voted against the list in which his name was extracted. The Senior Counsel argued that Persaud cannot stand as an independent candidate as his name was extracted from the party's list. He made clear to the court that all candidates are obligated to vote with the list and those in breach of the compliance will be sanctioned. The senior counsel told the court that it is formal for government to have caucuses where agreements are made before the sessions of parliament. Does this principle apply only in motions of confidence or does it apply to every and every motion? Your Honour, it is my respectful submission that the system in Guyana requires persons who support a list and who are elected on a list support the policies and measures that are taken to parliament by the party. And so if I, you so don't... I, I, I take that as a yes. That yes, it, sorry. It, it means that on every motion, every member on the list must vote according to the way the list votes. And then what is the value of having any kind of opportunity for persons to vote in Parliament. It, 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 wouldn't it just become a charade? Attorney General Basil Williams contended that for the government to be defeated, an absolute majority of 34 votes was needed. An absolute majority in that case is half plus one. The argument arises at one half of the 65 members National Assembly. The number of 32.5 has to be rounded upwards to 33, and in this case, to get a majority, it needs an additional full vote. One of the judges, Justice David Hayton, reminded that no reference of an absolute majority was made in the Ghana Constitution. You need a larger number for majority than if it's just a majority of those actually voting. It's a simple and, and that's why I think Sir Dennis, by way of shorthand, said it's an absolute majority of the former case, simple majority of the latter case. But he didn't go into any uh, uh, one, you know, halving in one plus one formula, did he? No, please, Your Honor. Because that's appropriate where you've got an even number to divide, but where you've got an odd number, there's no reason for that. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Opposition leader Barajagio has warned the government that its people will get crumbs from the oil and gas sector if there is no clear direction. Guyana will become a powerhouse in the oil arena when commercial production begins in 2020. However, the opposition party is not pleased with the promotion of Guyana's oil and gas sector. Opposition leader Barajagio said there is no clear direction of the sector as only platitudes are being given by the government, which will be perilous to Guyanese. The government has not stated whether or not oil blocks will be auctioned. We have failed Guyana, and we are failing Guyana, this government is, in ensuring that the, the oil sector really is led in a fashion and steered in a fashion to benefit Guyanese. And it seems as though we are allowing a few people from the local people and the international community to define where we go in this industry. And if that happens, ordinary Guyanese, we the people of Ghana, will get the crumbs from this sector. The opposition leader reminded that the oil and gas contract Ghana signed in 2016 heavily favors the concessionaires. Guyana will be getting 2% royalty and 50% of the profit after cost recovery. Despite being heavily condemned for signing the contract and the lack of a local content policy, to date, there is not a local content policy in place to ensure Guyanese gain employment from the foreign companies. We don't have a model contract, a definitive one. We don't have a a petroleum commission. We don't have a local content policy. We, 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 all we're talking about is getting 
some money from abroad to hire consultants to work in the future. Jack Dio urged the government to ensure Guyanese benefit the fullest from the oil and gas sector. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals hey you have a growing flesh there and there too and there is another one those ugly and annoying growing flesh like a plague ignoring them and before you know you have them everywhere slimjet presenting coliomac the most effective growing flesh and wall remover painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way Get soft, smooth, growing flesh free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at Slimjet, City Mall, second floor. Bees on windows and doors. Fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 out of value new road freedom hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 new road freedom hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 out of value. Performance without compromise. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. Opposition leader Barajagio is pleased that Carl Greenwich will be retained at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Jagdio noted that Greenwich has the expertise. Carl Greenwich was forced to resign from the National Assembly after the court ruled he was not eligible to be elected as a Member of Parliament. Greenwich, along with six other parliamentarians, had sworn allegiance to another country, thereby disqualifying them from election into Parliament. By resigning from the National Assembly, Greenwich, Joe Harmon, Dominic Gaskin and Dr. Rupert Rupnerine automatically resigned as government ministers. Yesterday, President David Granger confirmed that Greenwich will remain at the Foreign Affairs Ministry to continue heading the border controversy case among other functions yet to be stated. Today, opposition leader Barajagdio said he is quite pleased that Greenwich will remain in the ministry. He noted Greenwich has the expertise to continue spearheading the border controversy fight, a matter he described as paramount. We don't have a problem with Carl Greenwich being there, especially at this time because it's critical on the border issue. Apart from Greenwich, Former Minister of State Joseph Harmon had a position created for him called the Director General of the Ministry of the Presidency. Dominic Gaskin and Dr. Rupert Rupnerine are yet to receive other government positions. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. 
Online news site Newsroom is reporting a 77-year-old man had to be rushed into emergency surgery at the New Amsterdam Hospital after he was badly beaten by bandits while his 71-year-old wife also suffered injuries in the wee hours of today. The website said that around three hours, two armed men punched on the home of the elderly couple and their grandchildren at Lot 53 Alnis Village Quarantine Barbies. Camilla Goldchild was beaten to her head while her husband Guildford was badly beaten to the face and stomped in the abdomen. According to Newsroom, he was rushed to the hospital with a bloodied face and a severe abdominal pain. The family later found out he was bleeding internally and needed to undergo emergency surgery. The elderly woman was treated at the Port Morant Hospital and subsequently discharged. The men gained entry through a window on the lower flat of the two-story house after they broke the steel grill. Erwin Scarville, 29, the couple's grandson, said he was awakened by the screams of his grandmother. He was held at gunpoint when he exited his room. The bandit, he said, demanded cash with a gun pointed to his neck. Scarville was also beaten by the bandits. It is unclear what was taken from the elderly couple. Commander of the Division Marlon Chapman says an investigation has been launched into the circumstances surrounding the death of a 25-year-old Special Lance Corporal who was allegedly beaten by a Special Sergeant at the Special Constabulary Headquarters on Saturday. When contacted for further information regarding the circumstances which led to the young officer's demise, Commander of A Division Marlon Chapman said an investigation has since been launched and that the said police officer in question is under close arrest. But what I do know is that all aspects of the allegation have been investigated. I speak I know of one and if there are others to be when the investigation so revealed, the appropriate action will be taken. I would not anything beyond that sort of prejudice investigation in any way. According to the police, on Saturday about 9.15 hours, while at the Special Constabulary Headquarters, located on Princess Street, Lance Corporal Carlos Allen and a police sergeant were involved in a misunderstanding, which eventually led to a scuffle. After the alleged scuffle, Allen of 111 Miles Madia complained of feeling unwell before he was allowed to go seek medical treatment at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. However, hours later on that very day, Allen succumbed to his injuries. The post-mortem conducted on the body of Allen a few days later concluded he died as a result of brain hemorrhage due to blunt force trauma to the head. Based on additional information provided, the mother of Lance Corporal Carlos Allen did not find out about her son's demise until five days later when she was contacted and asked to make contact with the Albertang police station. Lance Corporal Carlos Allen, prior to his death, had posted a video recording of himself via his Facebook account account, which showed him singing songs in tribute to members of his family and friends. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The Granger government is being heavily condemned by the indigenous community for allowing the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission to chase them off from mining on traditional lands. Villagers in the Maruka sub-district of Region 1 have bashed the government for allowing the GGMC and the Guyana Police Force to enter Chinese landing, chasing the local miners from the area. The plot of land the miners are working is a block belonging to Wayne Fera. To show of Chinese landing, Orin Fernandes explained that the team came in the area, which he said belongs to the indigenous people, and dismantled all the structures. He claimed to have been told by the GGMC that the Caribbean Court of Justice ruled that the land does not belong to Chinese landing. But the two shall claim that there was nothing in the ruling of the CCJ that allowed the GGMC to march in the village and evict the locals. The Guyana Geology and Mines Commission, headed by Michael Howard and escorted by heavily armed members of the Guyana Police Force descending upon, upon our community last week, the 1st of May, with no advance notification or written justification for entering community lands. 
they came to to dismantle our mining operations and evict evict us from our own lands they showed us no written or order or base basis for act acting they claimed that they were acting upon the instruction of the minister of natural resource and the ggmc base on a ruling by the caribbean code of justice in 2017 we have sought le legal opinion that has guided that the ccj decision does not order ggmc to de destroy our property and evict us from our own legal recognized land to show of Waikarabi, Rimple Williams, in expressing his displeasure and fright, related that he does not believe the indigenous population is being treated fairly. He affirmed the area is ancestral lands and as such, the Amerindians are entitled to them and should not be evicted. The laws and the court system of Guyana does not adequately protect our rights as indigenous people. But to seek criminalize us on our own lands, our people are scared because the government bought in weapons and heavily armed police to our village. The villagers noted that mining is the main source of income for the 12 villages in the Maruka sub-district, despite hunting and farming are still done. They are calling for the rights of Amerindians and the right to work to be upheld. We ask that the government start respecting us and respecting our human rights to FBIC, to our lands and to our livelihood. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. A woman has survived a fall over the Tumachamari waterfall at Region 8 following a boat mishap which occurred Wednesday morning. Reports are that a woman along with a male companion were in their private boat when it capsized, causing her to fall overboard. As the male managed to make it to shore safely, the woman had disappeared. A report was subsequently made to the police for assistance in locating the woman's body. After many hours had passed, it was feared that she had drowned. However, to many persons surprised, the woman was seen by villagers later in the evening walking back to her village. According to Commander of Air Division Kevin Adonis, the woman swam her way to safety. She was subsequently taken to the hospital in that area to receive treatment for the minor injuries she sustained. Eleven students of the Open Doors Center National Vocational Training Center for Persons with Disabilities in Guyana are now equipped with life skills that will now make them marketable. The batch completed a one-year training course in information technology, garment construction, and craft, home decor, fabric designing, carpentry, among others. Manager of the Open Doors Center, Archer Lewis, said in Guyana and the world over, persons living with disabilities have been and continue to encounter prejudices among some in society as they attempt to be a part of the world of work. Lewis explained that the organization was first established to provide such persons the opportunity to lead a normal and a fruitful life. Today's graduation ceremony is the ninth of its kind for the Institute. The few who can acquire some sort of education, no matter how qualified they are, when the employer sees their disability, they always say, we'll get back to you. And they would wait for another decade, and they still would not be employed. They look at the paperwork, they see it's okay, but then when they look at the person themselves, they have a different mindset. That's what persons with disabilities go through in Guyana and worldwide. Our mission is to offer technical and vocational training 
to persons with disabilities to build an inclusive society. According to Lewis, during the period 2017 and 2000. Here is Roger Schlakan with this week's What Do People Say? What strategies can the Guyana Police Force implement to reduce crime in the country? Let's hear what the people had to say. Well, there is a lot of things more that, let me say, the government can do so to empower the, the Guyana Police Force. But before we deal with the Guyana Police Force, we first have to look at decentralized governmental authority. I said it few months ago, even before the local government elections, what is critically needed is a national crime commission. And that national crime commission need board of governors. All the mayors of all the towns and city of Guyana and all the regional chairmen, they are the ones who should be the governors of the National Crime Commission board. Step up a little more on the security, where the security is, conform, is concerned, because um, I, I said that they're not doing a good job, but I, need, I mean they should step up more on where the crime, crime fighting is concerned. Put um, like all the security, all the road is there, the, uh, the streets is as it is now. Put, more security, the, 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 the constables on the road to keep the um, at least the driver ease up some of the where the crime rate is concerned. Because I mean, um, you could get the police, them the police force here, but still they could get crime going on somewhere else. You understand me? So at the same time, you can't be there, here, there, and everywhere. They try their best to see what they could do. Well, for once, to reduce crime mostly is the young men that don't have jobs. So because of them not having a job, they decide to go on the bad side and go into crime and rob and kill people. But to me, just open more job opportunities for young people. And i sure once you have a job, there's no need to do bad things to get the money. So that's my view on it. Aside from that, what immediate steps the Guyana Police Force The Guyana Police Force? Oh, the Guyana Police Force to tackle the crime. Well, at least let the police do their jobs. You know, be more stern with it and just have more police on the lookout, is it? Quick, quicker response based on from when the people call into when they show up on the scene of the crime. Because if they respond quick enough on the scene, maybe they'll be able to stop a lot of things that's going on instead of coming after when the crime is already over. You know, making no sense. Here is Celine Griffith with MTV's Court Roundup. A man was today sentenced after being convicted on a narcotics charge. 27-year-old Tishon Haywood of Alberton had denied the charge which alleged on December 6, 2018 at the aforementioned location he had 56.7 kilograms of cannabis for trafficking purposes. The prosecution's case was that Haywood was under police surveillance and was seen by ranks along with another person, taking bags from a car to a structure under the house. A search was conducted and the police found a bag in a chicken pen containing a quantity of leaves, seeds and stems suspected to be cannabis. Haywood was later arrested and charged. Before sentencing, the magistrate stated that the prosecution had proven their case beyond reasonable doubt and that Haywood was guilty as charged. As such, Tishon Haywood was sentenced to four years' imprisonment for the offence. Meanwhile, former Prime Minister Samuel Hines' son was today hauled before the court to answer to several traffic charges. Samuel Hines Jr. of Evan Phillips Park Agricola East Bank de Morara pleaded not guilty to the five charges. The charges allege that on May 9 at Main Street, Georgetown, he resisted arrest, behaved disorderly, assaulted a police officer, drove his motor car when the identification mark was not visible, and resisted to take a breathalyzer test. According to reports on the day in question, police were conducting a driving under the influence exercise along Main Street 
when they stopped motor car PNN4446, driven by Heinz. He was asked to exit the car and take a breathalyzer test, to which he refused. It is alleged that an officer then attempted to arrest him when he allegedly assaulted the officer and pointed a gun at him. The officers were forced to request backup and Heinz was successfully arrested. Samuel Heinz Jr. was granted bail in the sum of $50,000, $10,000 on each charge. He is scheduled to reappear in court on June 12. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. Here again is Celine Griffith with today's Tips for a Healthy Living. Bronchitis is an inflammation of the lining of your bronchial tubes which carry air to and from your lungs. People who have bronchitis often cough an optic and mucus which can be discolored. Bronchitis may be either acute or chronic. Often developing from a cold or other respiratory infection, acute bronchitis is very common. Chronic bronchitis, a more serious condition, is a constant irritation or inflammation of the lining of the bronchial tubes, often due to smoking. Acute bronchitis, also called a chest cold, usually improves within a week to 10 days without lasting effects, although the cough may linger for weeks. However, if you have repeated bouts of bronchitis, you may have chronic bronchitis which requires medical attention. Symptoms For either acute bronchitis or chronic bronchitis, signs and symptoms may include Cough Production of mucus which can be clear, white, yellowish, gray or green in color. Rarely, it may be streaked with blood. Fatigue Shortness of breath Slight fever and chills Chest discomfort If you have acute bronchitis, you might have cold symptoms such as a mild headache or body aches. While these symptoms usually improve in about a week, you may have a nagging cough that lingers for several weeks. Chronic bronchitis is defined as a productive cough that lasts at least three months, with recurring bouts occurring for at least two consecutive years. If you have chronic bronchitis, you're likely to have periods when your cough or other symptoms worsen. At those times, you may have an acute infection on top of chronic bronchitis. Causes Acute bronchitis is usually caused by viruses, typically the same viruses that cause colds and flu. Antibiotics don't kill viruses, so this type of medication isn't useful in most cases of bronchitis. Air pollution and dust or toxic gases in the environment or workplace can also contribute to the condition. Risk factors Factors that increase your risk of bronchitis include Cigarette smoke People who smoke or live with a smoker are at higher risk of both acute bronchitis and chronic bronchitis. Low resistance. This may result from another acute illness such as a cold or from a chronic condition that compromises your immune system. Older adults, infants and young children are more vulnerable to infections. Exposure to irritants on the job. Your risk of developing bronchitis is greater if you work around certain lung irritants such as grains or textiles or are exposed to chemical fumes. Gastric reflux. Repeated bouts of severe heartburn can irritate your throat and make you more prone to developing bronchitis. Prevention To reduce your risk of bronchitis, follow these steps. 1. Avoid cigarette smoke. Cigarette smoke increases your risk of chronic bronchitis. 2. Get vaccinated. Many cases of acute bronchitis result from influenza, a virus. Getting a yearly flu vaccine can help protect you from getting the flu. 3. Wash your hands. To reduce your risk of catching a viral infection, wash your hands frequently and get in the habit of using alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Treatment Most cases of acute bronchitis get better without treatment, usually within a couple of weeks. Because most cases of bronchitis are caused by viral infections, antibiotics are not effective. However, if your doctor suspects that you have a bacterial infection, antibiotics may be prescribed. In some circumstances, your doctor may recommend other medications including Cough medicine If your cough keeps you from sleeping, you might try cough suppressants at bedtime. Other medications If you have allergies, asthma, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease COPD, your doctor may recommend an inhaler and other medications to reduce inflammation and open narrowed passages in your lungs. Lifestyle and home remedies To help you feel better, avoid lung irritants. Do not smoke. Wear a mask when the air is polluted or if you are exposed to irritants, such as paint or household cleaners with strong fumes. Coming up after the break, MTV's Sport Update and more. Stay with us. 
Every day is a new beginning. It's another chance to start over. Another chance to do the right thing. Make the right decisions. Every day you deserve the best. Make the right choice. Every day. Every day range of products. Affordable and high quality. Every day. Distributed by Guy Bisco. 35 and 38 Industrial Estate. Eccles. East Bank Demerara. Telephone. 233-3255. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bel Air Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated, we are your source for security. by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Ultra Lubricants, the leading lubricants for tropical conditions, has been serving you for over 40 years, extending the life cycle of your vehicle's engine by protecting it from wear and corrosion, removes impurities, and reducing frequent vehicle oil changes. Ultra Lubricants is for every market, from two-wheel light vehicle to trucks, construction, agriculture equipment, mining activities, and boating. Ultra Lubricants, world-class lubricants for tropical conditions. Distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc and available nationwide. Welcome to the MTV Sport Update. The ODI between Ireland and Bangladesh, the third of the Tri-Nation series involving West Indies as the other team, was called off due to heavy rain in Malahide. The match officials waited till 2.15 p.m. local time before making the decision as the rain didn't stop for much of the morning and afternoon. The toss also didn't take place as the rain began soon after the teams arrived at the venue. There was also a lot of rain on Wednesday evening as well. Today's game would have been the first meeting between Bangladesh and Ireland in two years. The two teams now split points which takes Bangladesh to the top of the points table with six points, followed by West Indies who are now on five points from two games. They beat Ireland by 196 runs before getting tranched by eight wickets to by Bangladesh. Ireland now takes on West Indies in the fourth game of the Tri-Nation series, also in Malahide on Saturday. The weather forecast is much better for that game. England's Danny Wyatt could not manage a second match winning innings in the women's T20 challenge but helped her velocity side reach the final. Wyatt was player of the match after hitting 4-6 in Velocity's win over a Trailblazers side includes in, including England's spinner Sophie Eccleston on Wednesday. But on Thursday, Velocity were edged by the Supernovas including England's Natalie Skiva despite Wyatt's 4-3. Supernovas and Velocity will meet again on Sunday's final in Jaipur. 
With all three sides winning one match in the round robin series, Trailblazers were eliminated on net run rate once Velocity had passed 117 in their pursuit of Supernova's 142 for three. The Women's T20 Challenge is seen as a prelude to a possible Women's Indian Premier League, which last, which last year's one-off game expanded to involve three teams. Alongside India's top players, a number of leading overseas players have featured again, such as England's Wyatt, Eccleston and Skiva, New Zealand's Susie Bates and Sophie Devine, and West Indies' Stephanie Taylor and Hayley Matthews. South Africa's current series against Pakistan has prevented their players from participating. But controversially, no Australians were invited to play in this year's challenge. Local karting team Pure Racing has acquired a sponsorship from Banks DIH Limited under their Sprite brand. A few days ahead of the 2019 season opener set for GT Motorsports this weekend. Non-alcoholic brand manager Jennifer Kahn contended that the company is looking to move in a new direction. Representing Pure Racing, Annalisa Fang contended that the team is more than happy to have secured the sponsorship. Adding that Pure Racing is delighted to have Banks DIH and Sprite on board finally. This weekend's GT Motorsports' Georgetown Grand Prix is billed for Saturday and is expected to include drivers from Trinidad and Tobago as well as Jamaica. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV Sports Update. Integrated Security Services Incorporated, one of the largest security firms in Guyana, has partnered with the Lusignan Golf Club to host their inaugural golf tournament this Saturday at the Lusignan Golf Club. President of the Lusignan Golf Club, Alim Hussein, noted that the precision required in the game of golf may be compared and likened to the precision required in the high level of security and other services that ISS provides, engaging no margin for error. ISS plans to use the LGC and golf to help in team-building activities for their staff. Meanwhile, Saturday's tournament is open to all golfers in Guyana, and members of the public are invited to be spectators and at the same time enjoy the ambience of the LGC course. Action tees off at 12 hours 30 at the Lusignan Golf Club. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MTV Sports Update. World number one Naomi Osaka was beaten by Belinda Banshik as the Swiss fought back from a set down to reach the Madrid Open semi finals. The Japanese, led by a break in the final set and served for the match out, Benchik broke back to win 3 6 6 2 7 5. Benchik, ranked 18 in the world, saved 8 of 12 break points as she secured her second victory over Osaka in 2019. The 22 year old will play world number three Simona Halep next after Halep's quarter final win over Ashley Barty. Halep, a two-time champion in Madrid, beat Australian ninth seed Barty 7-5, 7-5. The Romanian can replace Osaka as world number one if she wins the title. Guyana's top male CrossFit athlete Dylan Mahadio along with Guyana's top female CrossFit athlete Delise Adonis have qualified to compete at this year's esteemed Reebok CrossFit Games this summer in Wisconsin. Mahario acquired his qualification at last weekend's CrossFit Challenge in Trinidad and Tobago. Accompanying him will be Guyana's top female CrossFit athlete, Delisa Donis, who drew her opponent third place during the challenge, but later won the tiebreaker three of five workouts. For the first time, the 2019 CrossFit Open crowned national champions at the conclusion of the worldwide competition, marking CrossFit's expansive and inclusive global nature and a proud victory for the 236 individuals who earned the right to represent their country at the 2019 Games. Mahadio and Adonis were both crowned champions for Guyana. The games have been set for July 29 to August 4 and will see the prestigious fittest on earth title at stake in Madison, Wisconsin, the United States of America. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MTV Sports Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Ultra Lubricants, the leading lubricants for tropical conditions, has been serving you for over 40 years, extending the life cycle of your vehicle's engine by protecting it from wear and corrosion, removes impurities, and reducing frequent vehicle oil changes. Ultra Lubricants is for every market, from two-wheel light vehicle to trucks, construction, agriculture equipment, mining activities, and boating. Ultra Lubricants, world-class lubricants for tropical conditions. Distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc and available nationwide. 
Now for some news in the region. Belizeans yesterday voted in a referendum on whether a top UN court could rule a neighbor in Guatemala's claim that it is the rightful owner of half of Belize's territory, a dispute dating back to Spanish and British colonial rule. Guatemalans in April 2018 overwhelmingly voted to ask the International Court of Justice in The Hague to make a decision on the dispute with Belize. The referendum in the small Central American country is highly politicized, but could help end a border conflict that originated during the colonial era. Belize's rule in the United Democratic Party has argued in favor of seeking the court's intervention in hopes of settling the matter once and for all, betting the court will uphold the current border. Earl Trapp, UDP mayor of the twin towns San Ignacio and Santa Elena, said a vote for the court was imperative. This is the time that we have support from the world, from the UN, to end the, this rather unfounded claim, he said. A trickle of voters reaching polling stations during the morning with greater numbers expected in the afternoon. Results of the referendum are expected by early Thursday. On the international scene, Chinese and U.S. negotiators are set to resume trade talks in Washington amid the threat of fresh tariffs and warnings over the global economy. President Trump says he will raise tariffs on $200 billion of Chinese goods on Friday, with his officials accusing China of reneging on promises. China has said it will respond with necessary countermeasures. The International Monetary Fund said that Rao poses a threat to the global economy. The two sides had appeared to be making progress until recently, but uncertainty now surrounds whether the talks will succeed. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange. Closing prices for trading session 8 to 5. Let's turn our attention to the Demerara Harbour Bridge and Burbies River Bridge schedules. That's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here is a reminder of our top stories. GICA must be always prepared for elections in the shortest possible time, according to several CCJ judges. Jagdia warns that government lack of direction could lead to Guyanese not benefiting significantly from oil revenues. Bandits terrorize Burby's family as crime escalates. And in sport, third ODI of Tri-Nation series involving West Indies washed out. Catch a rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf, on behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Lashona Gomez-Cornelius. Good night.